Now, let's turn our attention to what are called variable costs. Variable cost is the cost that changes as the total output changes. Tell me, Johan, what's your most important variable cost here? Um, it's labour, um, inputs like steel, paint, gas, um, welding material. They're all variable in the sense that they can change in the short term. As Blakemarker produces more ornaments, it uses more materials, more labour, more of its variable inputs. So variable costs increase as output increases. These costs are given in column 4. We can show them graphically in the following diagram. Looking at these figures, if total output is zero, variable cost is zero. And from there, it increases as production increases. At 1,000 ornaments, it's 30,000 rand. At 2,000 units, it's 50,000 rand. 3,000 units, 65,000 rand, and so on. If we draw a smooth curve through these values, we can see more than the obvious, which is that variable costs increase as production increases. We know that. But we can now see that it increases less and less, until around 3,000 units. And after that point, it starts to rise by bigger and bigger amounts. It's this changing slope of this curve that we have to try and explain. Let's take a look at what happens to average variable cost. Average variable cost is the total variable cost divided by the total product, and it's listed in column 5. The average variable cost for 1,000 units is 30,000 rand, divided by 1,000, that's 30. For 2,000 units, it's 50,000 rand divided by 2,000, so that's 25 rand, and so on. Graphically, it's represented like this. Joining the points as before, you can see that the average variable cost curve first goes down, reaches a minimum, and then starts to increase. Its curve is U-shaped, and it's this shape that we need to understand. But before we do that, we must deal with the total cost of production, and then with an important concept, the marginal cost of production.